Hello YouTubers, tiny house people and gardeners everywhere. This is our May update for the garden. So let's get inside and take a look at what's going on. Spread around the garden we have baskets and buckets of blackberries. As you can see here some of them uh, have leaves like this one. A lot of them don't because they're just getting started and they haven't even put up shoots yet. Over here we have our herb garden. And in this herb garden box, we've got uh, Italian oregano. We have Greek oregano. We have parsley. And right here between the parsley and the fence, we have cilantro. We also have several small basil plants that are recovering from the cool weather. They really didn't like that cool weather. Uh, but they're coming back now. And then over here we have sorrel. Now, you probably can't see it, but there is a tiny, tiny shoot of uh, shallot coming up there. Now, right here in this corner, nothing's come up yet, but we have Malabar spinach planted. The Malabar spinach should come up here in the corner and then climb the fence. So that's the plan. If it's successful, it does like to climb. And here under this net structure, we have cauliflower and kale. They're under the net because we always have lots of problems with white moths and laying uh, the cabbage worm and of course they go after cabbage, cauliflower, uh, broccoli. They don't like kale as much but when you have them all planted out they'll indiscriminately lay eggs just about anywhere and whatever they hatch out on they start eating. So uh, hopefully that will not be a problem because we have this net. And of course we keep that weighted down. On around the corner here is more blackberries and as you can see these blackberries have flowers on them and they also have the blackberries. So hopefully that's coming in. And here we have some uh, onions and shallots and there's even a leak. So those are all doing quite well. You can see they've come up. Uh, we have more, like I said, baskets of blackberries. Uh, some of them are really just kind of getting started. Usually when you first plant a blackberry, uh, it'll do one of two things. If it, has, if it already has leaves on it, they'll either dry up and then it'll send out new shoots if they're not very well established, or it will start flowering and, and produce more leaves and, and do just fine. We've had both experiences so far with our blackberries this year. These are new plants that we've just gotten. Over here along the fence we have other buckets and these are full of stevia. This particular one was overwintered. Uh, we had uh, four buckets of stevia, three overwintered successfully, one didn't and we've replanted it. Also in this next box we have strawberries and we're actually getting quite a few strawberries now. You can see that one's pretty much ready for picking. And in between where the strawberries didn't come up, I've got a few uh, uh, Hungarian hot wax peppers coming up. Strawberries generally make a very nice uh, companion plant to many of your garden plants because especially the ones that grow taller like your pepper plants or even your tomatoes because what happens is they keep the ground free of weeds and they provide uh, a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, moisture cover, ground cover to keep the moisture in. Alright, so of course we got more stevia, more blackberries. Here in this box we've got chard. Chard is doing quite well. We've already harvested a few leaves. And we have peas along the fence. Now the peas really were kind of difficult to start this time around. Not sure why that was. But we actually did two plantings and we have peas along several sections of fence here. And in the places where they didn't come up we've also planted the Malabar spinach which will come up we hope and climb the fence wherever the peas are not. Uh, it's another plant you can kind of companion plant alongside even though the peas will be gone you know, by, by mid-season and the Malabar spinach would just get started because Malabar spinach is kind of a warm weather plant. Then down here what you can see is we have rows where we have planted uh, beet seed 
and there's actually one little beat coming up already and I don't know if you can see him there on the camera the little green spot I just now saw him well actually uh, there is another right there so they're starting to come up the way we planted this was to simply dig furrows drop the seed in and then we covered it with some used but dried out again vermiculite uh, in order to make it easy for the seeds to uh, come forward but also and, and spring up but also to uh, help keep the moisture in a little bit better than just covering them with regular soil and that's what we've done again with this box here that's kind of sitting uh, astraddle these two uh, square foot beds is we've got beets in there also that none of them look like they're popping up yet but they will be soon now a lot of times what we do is besides vermiculite another option you can do is cover seed beds with burlap and that's what you see right here in this in this uh, seed bed uh, what's in here is actually leaf lettuce and uh, that's to kind of just keep the sun from beating down on the surface of the soil and drying it out it's also so when you water it it doesn't cause your uh, doesn't cause your seeds to get washed away or washed out of place and then of course you can see we have more peas along this section of fence and some alabar spinach planted in between that has not come up yet and there's actually a couple of volunteer lettuce plants uh, right in here so uh, that's what we're looking at right there uh, this is a new stevia plant that is uh, is just been uh, purchased and planted to take the place of the one that didn't make it and then over here we have more beets in the uh, vermiculite troughs we have more strawberries these were recently transplanted into this box so it was too crowded in one of the other boxes and we have more uh, peas climbing the fence we also have some peas that are putting on flowers so we'll have some peas here before too long hopefully also uh, we have some uh, Malabar spinach plant in between them. so it's just a very noisy date here today um, I guess uh, municipal um, city is sitting by all the trash trucks and also helicopters flying over and you know it seems like they always wait until they come out here to do this video and then they just all take to the skies and to the streets but anyway you know how that goes this is a uh, small tote that has now all these totes that you're seeing here are lined with uh, uh, landscape fabric but they've got holes drilled all through the bottom so they drain out real well same way with the buckets uh, they, they all have holes drilled in the bottom and this is uh, this right here is actually uh, onion sets and then behind it in this one bucket here is uh, my wife Carla just planted some cucumbers the other day and they'll have room to climb on this fence as well and then over here we see uh, more strawberries quite a few ripe strawberries ready to pick and garlic was interplanted in among these strawberries and has done really well this is probably the best stand of garlic uh, that we've had this time around and as you can see or hopefully see the the leaves are turning yellow because uh, by June we'll be pulling up the garlic and uh, we'll have fresh garlic out of the garden now here in the middle bed we have all kinds of hot peppers uh, some of these are quite small as you can see down here in the corner this guy's just kind of a shrimp but hot peppers do real well in our little garden we've always been able to raise just about any kind of hot pepper uh, they're just more vigorous and more uh, forgiving if you will of bad soils and uh, bad weather conditions than uh, are the are the harder to grow sweet peppers especially the bells uh, then behind this we have I'll back up here a little bit we have more garlic so we plant actually three areas of garlic and uh, this one has done quite well also the one at the outer edge of the fence got a little bit uh, cold nipped from time to time so it didn't do nearly as well and then we have uh, more hot peppers now as hot for hot pepper varieties we plant all kinds black Hungarians Hungarian hot wax Thai hot peppers uh, serranos uh, purple Peruvians uh, just you know, just a whole wide range of peppers there's even a, a couple of jalapenos in there and then we have our uh, lavender bush has really started going to town here and it's just now starting to put on buds I don't know if you can see it or not but those will open up into 
two columns of purple flowers. And when it does, we will have swarms of bumblebees in here pollinating all of our plants, which is a great thing. And then we have a few more uh, hot peppers there. And also here we have another seed bed, which is also leaf lettuce. And on this one, we we're trying cheesecloth to see how that works. So that's just one of those little experiments that we like to do. Next to that seed bed, we have our asparagus bed. And it's been a little disappointing this year. Uh, we had some decent asparagus last year, actually better so far than we're having this year. And uh, the bed's not that old. It's only, a, it's only like, four or five years old and we had really put a lot of compost on it over the winter watered it in frequently uh, so uh, we're a little disappointed that it's not coming up better than that but it is Martha Washington it's just not as productive and uh, as reliable and in my opinion it doesn't taste as good either as uh, as Jersey Giant or Purple Passion all, all the different uh, varieties you have that are uh, designed to produce and mainly they produce, as I understand it, just male stalks uh, instead of the male and female. So they're just more productive all the way around. Along the back, what we have is our pool system. And that's basically just uh, a raised bed that we have uh, dug out, that we used to have a raised bed like all these others. And we've dug it out and lined it with plastic and we keep it full of water that has some fertilizers in it as well as uh, just a little bit of detergent, a little bit of mosquito dunk to keep the mosquitoes from uh, uh, using it as a play pool. Uh, and then we, essentially there's three types of plants in here. Uh, in the back, in the grow bags, you'll see we have tomatoes and these are all indeterminate, to, indeterminate tomatoes. And they will grow up these uh, poles and then eventually when they get high enough, I'll connect a line from these poles up to a gutter and uh, they'll actually climb up to the gutter tops and then even hang off of that a little bit. At least they have in the past. So that's the plan for that. Uh, we've probably got about six, seven different kinds. Uh, some cherries, some uh, slicers, some plum sized tomatoes, blacks, uh, uh, reds, pinks, uh, blues. Um, we also have uh, one that is actually a peach color. Uh, it turns it's not really yellow. It's not really orange. It turns peach and even gets a red blush a little bit on one side to really look just like a Georgia peach. And then in the smaller buckets here, you can see with the holes drilled in them, those are the sweet peppers. Uh, it's really two kinds of peppers. Uh, there are uh, Black Beauty Bells and uh, Giant Red Marconis. And then in the small bags, uh, we're going to plant Butter Crunch loose head lettuce. So we're looking forward to getting that going. That's still in progress. There's really nothing there to show. So that's really the garden this time around. Uh, it's pretty full and we've planted pretty much everything that we're going to plant or at least we got the place uh, set for it like in the butter uh, crunch head lettuce. So that's it except with one exception. I've almost forgot to show you our potatoes because I kind of went by them when I first came in. We planted these, uh, they're actually slips we grew in our garden window over the winter. And then we planted them out. Now some of them we planted with large stalks of leaves on them. You can see these tall ones. Many of them did not have leaves that, that were viable. Uh, but we just planted the stalks uh, with the, it formed really nice fruits. So we knew that the plants were doing okay. And then we just planted these and you can see that the leaves are just coming out everywhere on these. So we're really having a, a good turn with these sweet potatoes. This is Carolina Reds. It's our favorite sweet potato. That we, and we just got these from the local farmer's market and they actually ran out of them. They were so popular. And before we ran out of our, what we bought from them, we, we planted some and, and raised them ourselves. Uh, sweet potatoes are really easy to raise from slips. Uh, we have a video. Uh, that kind of covers that more or less, but it's the old stick the toothpicks in the potato, stick it in a jar, a mason jar of water, and just let it sit halfway in the water, halfway out. Make sure you get the root side down and the and the uh, uh, sprout side up, the plant side up, so that it will give you uh, potatoes uh, that you can replant, slips that you can replant. Then all we did was uh, 
take those slips, cut them off the potato when they were mature, leave a little chunk of potato on there. That's what we did and it worked real well. Then just dip those in a container of water and set them outside as long as it's warm enough. And uh, what will happen is that the, the lower nodules or, or nodes, if you will, of the stems will drop roots. And when they do, uh, then you can, uh, you can be sure that you're ready to plant it out and it's, it's going to work just fine. So that's the garden for uh, the month of May here in 2017. This is Chris here in the Ozarks. Until next time, happy gardening.